there, it's Sheree from Sheree's Crafty Girls. Thank you for joining me today. Today I'm going to make this lovely fold flat box. And I came across this because I make some jewellery and I need something to send my jewellery in. And I wanted to make some boxes that I could store quite easily as this one does. With all the embellishments on, it just folds flat. And I thought that would be super for sending out my jewellery in and while I'm talking about jewellery um, I became silver this this year and Stampin' Up sent their silvers this beautiful beautiful necklace look at that isn't that absolutely beautiful and all I did was the job I love telling people about their fantastic products and showing what can be made from from these products that all coordinate and they sent me this totally free the lovely little token there that says stamping up I think that's beautiful and it's just for doing something I really love doing anyway back to making the box you are going to need a piece of cardstock. This one I used Sweet Sugar Plum and I can't remember the name of the paper. It's just gone completely out of my head. Falling in Love DSP. And the... I had it right here. Beautiful thin, butterfly thin lids. And I think that's really, really lovely. I, I adore butterflies. Don't like them flying around me. That would freak me out, but I do love them. So you need a piece of cardstock that measures eight and, in, eight and a half inches by five and a half inches. Two pieces of DSP, and these are three and a quarter inch square. And these come from the Sending Love Designer Series, six by six inch stack, which is beautiful. And again, you see it all coordinates. Some scrap paper because on this one I'm going to do some hearts instead of the butterfly. So we'll start off by making the box. So bring in your scoring board. With the long side at the top, you're going to score at three and a half inches, four inches, seven and a half and eight. Turn, so the short side is at the top, we're going to score at half an inch, one inch, four and a half, and five. That's out of the way. And with your bow folder, just fold and burnish your score lines. snips you have an edge that is completely flush and you have another edge that has two little tabs now on this one with the long side facing you cut down the first two score lines remove the first two squares and then remove the top of the next one so you're left with a little tab like so and just notching ever so slightly to remove that score line. Coming down to the next two squares you're going to cut it in to the second score line and again remove your top box and just whoops <laughs> notch just to remove the rest of that score line and make it sit nice and flush when we fold it. Now, turn it to the opposite side, so again the long side is facing you, you've got the flush side to your right, the two boxes in the centre, come up, remove the top box and notch in the 
what's the tab remaining. And come back to your four squares and again cut into your second score line, removing your first two boxes and then the single box and just notch ever so slightly there as well. Now where you have your two tabs, let's just move that out of the way, where you have the two tabs and you have the two tabs here, the flush edge to your right, you are going to remove these two outer tabs just leaving this inner square. So fold your tab in and cut nice and neatly across and I obviously can't cut oh, it's arguing with me it doesn't want to be removed but do remove it and do the same the other side to take away this middle two tabs like so then we need a corner rounder and you're going to round the outer edge of the two remaining oops come on two remaining sides and these are the top and bottom of your box so just silly does not want to play so just round those two corners and now fold it over and we're going to pop on our DSP it doesn't matter which way is which as long as your pattern if it's, if it's got a pattern in a specific order to say that's the top and that's the bottom of the pattern you do need to face it not this way because that's the sides of your box you do need to have it with the flaps at the top and the bottom because they are the top and the bottom of your box this hasn't got a specific order so i'm just going to run some fast views on all four sides you could use whichever adhesive you have at hand oh i was going to do the white oh well it's red now I wanted to put the white on the outside like so. Never mind. That's what you got. That's what you get for not paying attention. My fast views is annoying me because it's not. That's a bit better. So do pay. No, see, I've done that wrong. Isn't that annoying? That's what you get for not paying attention. So I'm just going to cut another piece out and make sure I do this one right. So it's three and a quarter inch square. Oops, there we go. And paying attention this time, I will adhere the right side. I bet you were all shouting at me stick in the wrong side but there you go and then just pop that in the center of your square like so and then with, you are going to put some adhesive down this tab on the end and then join your box making sure it's really nice and neat like so and with it now you can either with a three quarter inch circle punch put a thumb hole both ends in the centre as best you can I'm only going to do the one end but you can do both and that's where it folds flat and with this I'm now going to put some ribbon and I'm going to use the ribbon organza in the in the whites 
and I'm just going to pop that round my box and square that edge up a little bit. She says making it just as and I'm just going to stick that to the centre of my my box. So I'm going to cut it around there. Nearly out of that, after all it's more. And I'm just going to stick, as I said, that to the centre of my box. And it doesn't matter if it doesn't totally meet because I'm going to cover it with some hearts. So using some fast views, I'm just going to make sure that sticks like so. And there is your box. So we're going to pop that close like that for the moment. I'm going to go and do some die cutting now. So there you are. Isn't that lovely? So pop that to one side and we're going to bring in our die cutting machine, our big shot or whichever one you have. And this we're going to, I'm going to use the sweet and sassy frame it set which is all these lovely hearts. I'm just going to zoom you out a little bit, there you go. And you've got these beautiful bubble type hearts or the ordinary hearts and I'm going to use the ordinary hearts and I'm going to alternate them so I'm going to have the big one in the red and miss one and then the next one and hopefully I'm hoping this is just you know it won't that's a shame Right, so pop those through, my magnetic board is moving them slightly, so you pop them through, stop it, there we go, pop that through your big shot, I probably will end up bashing the tripod, there we go, and I'm just going to bring it back because it's easier for me to remove. And that's two of my hearts that I'm going to pop on top. And then I'm going to take the next two and I'm going to pop those on there like so. Now before I actually do that, I wanted to stamp this one. So I'm going to pop them off. And I'm going to use this beautiful stamp set that goes with the paper. And that is... There we go. That is the Sealed With Love stamp set. And you've got all these different sentiments and hearts and I'm going to use this heart and I'm just going to stamp that and then I'm going to cut it out with a little one. So using the real red ink pad, ink up your stamp and pop that on. Like so, you can put sentiment in there or whichever you like and I'm using my stamping scrub with some stamping mist on there to clean my stamp and I used a B block for that one which was, I think fits it beautifully pop that away and it's going to bring back our big shot Pop on our hearts, the white one, making sure you've got the cut edge facing down. And I just want to place that over that heart, giving it just a tiny, tiny border. And then pop that through your big shot. Oops, sorry. Jogged you. I thought I would. 
don't have a lot of width on my desk. So removing your hearts and popping your framelits back so you don't misplace any. And I'm just going to remove this out of the way. And try and get back into focus for you. And then what we're going to do, my camera's going to die, I hope it's going to last. I'm just going to pop them on there like that. Pop my bracelet, which I think is absolutely gorgeous, inside my box to send away. Now I will try and get this stuck before the camera dies on me and all you're going to do is I'm going to use some where have they gone? They must have fallen down. Some dimensionals. My bottom heart I think I will just stick down over the seal of my ribbon and the next one I'm going to put a couple of dimensionals on and I'm going to put dimensionals on the next one and a dimensional on the last one. I'm trying to rush because I don't want the camera to to die on me. Right, so this one, if I can get the backing off, goes on this one. And moving the backing off that one. That goes on that one. And that one. goes on and that I think will make a beautiful Mother's Day present. Isn't that lovely? Well I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. It's a quick and simple little box and I've put my butterfly on upside down so I may have to remove that or put the hole in there and then it'll look fine. But it's a quick and easy little box, easy to store. If you've liked this tutorial please like and subscribe. Leave me a comment, I'd love to hear from you. Um, if you want any, to purchase any of the products used to make this project, there's a link below to my shop or there's one on my blog which is sharicecraftygirlsblog.wordpress.com. Until next time, take care. Bye.